Welcome to the instructional where we will take you through the process of completing a simple survey. It is assumed at this point that you have an idea as to the basic concept of a simple survey and that you have a general idea how to set up the equipment. You should have a plan where you will mark on your survey line and the points on the plan that you will take spot height measurements. In this instructional we will try and explain the process of surveying through simple sectional diagrams. In this instance we are measuring a simple downward slope. It is important to set up the tripod in a location close enough but on the downside of the benchmark to get your first sight. Most people make the mistake of setting up the tripod far too far down the slope. Remember that the vertical height on the tripod will only be approximately 1.2 meters. Where we set up the tripod we will call a station point. In this instance, we will call our first location station point 1. Our first task is always to take a site back to the benchmark as all subsequent measurements will be relative to this measurement. We can progressively work our way down the slope taking measurements at points we mark on our plan. It is good practice to codify the measurements relative to the station point. Therefore, all these measurements are prefixed with S1, meaning station point 1, so we label them S1-1, S1-2, S1-3 and so on. We can take measurements down the slope until we run out of vertical height on the surveyor's staff. Once this happens we must move the station point to a new location further down the hill. Before we do that though we need to calculate the levels so that we can establish that new benchmark further down the hill in the location of our final measuring point in this case S1-6. Here is a completed survey recording sheet for the measurements for the slope on the previous slide. This is the same survey recording sheet that you will use in the T2 workshop. When filling out the survey sheet it is important to work systematically. The first thing we do is to write down the measured height of the benchmark. This was the first reading we did when we started doing the survey. Next, we write down the actual height of the benchmark. We can then populate the first column of the table with the names of our survey points. Next, we fill in the values for the measured heights corresponding to those named survey points. We do our first calculation by taking away the measured height from the benchmark reading. If the resulting value is negative, then we must ensure we record that it is a negative value. If we forget to do this, our heights will be incorrect. We then add this result to the actual benchmark height. In our case, the actual benchmark was 15 meters Australian height datum. If the value in our result column was negative, then enter a negative number into our calculator and then add it to the actual benchmark height. This will give us the actual spot level relative to AHD or Australian height datum. Now that we have calculated the true spot levels, we can see that the last spot height, S1-6, was 10.45 meters. We will now use this level as our new benchmark. We can mark the location of S1-6 with a stake or something where we can make sure that we will always find that point. Once we have marked that benchmark location, or rather the new benchmark location, we can now move our station point further down the hill. We then repeat the process starting by taking a new benchmark sighting of our new benchmark location. We complete the next series of measurements using the same process as before, though this time the notations or names of each survey point are prefixed with S2, meaning they were taken from the second station point. We can then number the survey readings S2-1, S2-2, S2-3 and so on, and we can record the values that we read through the site against these locations. We then follow the same process of calculations as the first run, but we have to make sure that the benchmark reading and the actual benchmark height relate to our new benchmark that we created when we moved the station point. Through following the procedure, 
you can see how the heights decrease as we go down the slope to a low point at the creek bed at point S2-3 and then they rise up a little bit again on the other side. We always need to pay close attention to the character of the slope and its relationship to the benchmark. In this example, the slope is a bit more undulating and there is a small hill higher than the benchmark. As a rule of thumb, you should set up the station point or tripod in a location where you can get a clear sighting to the highest point as well as a sight back to the benchmark. In this instance, we are concentrating on the high point, but we can still view back to our benchmark location. We then proceed with our measurements, making sure we always start with a sight back to our benchmark as the first measurement. When we translate the height values onto our table, you can see the importance of maintaining the positive or negative integers. In this instance, some of the measurements are going uphill, which will result in a positive integer. This is illustrated in the survey points S3-2 and S3-3. When these are calculated through according to the process, you can see that the ground is higher than the benchmark, which is entirely consistent with the sectional profile of the slide beforehand. This ends this instructional focused on the simple survey process. It may be necessary to repeat the video to get a clearer understanding of the process, and perhaps when doing the workshop exercise, the logic will become more apparent. It is a process that is perplexing to many students, but it is important to get a general understanding of how contour and survey drawings work more broadly, as well as introducing skills that are useful during the construction and detailed design of projects.